Hi everyone, my name is Jaden, a technical assistant, and today I'm going to show you how you can do port folding on your router. Okay, so before I begin showing you guys how to do port folding, I will first give a brief explanation on the entire concept. Port forwarding is the configuring of a router to make the devices connected to it accessible by devices outside the local network. Imagine this. You have a Raspberry Pi connected to your router at home, and to this router are connected your other devices, such as your laptop. Your router assigns these devices internal IP addresses, which allows them to communicate over the local area network. Your router in turn is connected to a modem, which provides internet access to the devices on the network. Your modem is also assigned an IP address, but this IP address is a public IP address assigned by your internet service provider rather than your router. The public IP address is what enables communication between the local network and devices on the internet. Most routers have a built-in firewall so that no outside internet traffic can enter the local network. This creates the need for port forwarding to access devices on the local network, which in this case is your Raspberry Pi. When port forwarding is set up, a part of the firewall is opened up, which allows internet traffic in inside the network, but only on the forwarded port of course. For this illustration, the Raspberry Pi is running on port 22. So, if port forwarding has been set up on your router for port 22, outside traffic will now be allowed through the firewall on that port. You can use port forwarding for other ports too of course and for other many different purposes such as VPN or Telnet or even to create your own uh, mail server. Okay now I'm going to show you guys how to actually do port forwarding. First you want to make sure that your computer is connected to your router whether it be by LAN cable or by Wi-Fi. I have chosen the wireless route. Okay so you want to open your web browser and enter the IP address of your router in the address bar. To get that IP address, you want to open command prompt and type ipconfig. Okay, so your IP, the IP address of your router is also known as the default gateway. Since I'm using Wi-Fi, I'll be looking under this section. But if you're using LAN, a LAN cable, uh, you want to look under Ethernet adapter Ethernet. Okay, so you want to copy the default gateway and you want to paste it or you can just type it out in the address bar. This should bring you to your router's login page. This is what the D-Link's login page looks like and it may vary from router to router. It's usually different for different brands. Uh, by default, the login username for D-Link is admin and the password section is left blank. But uh, if you're using a different brand of router, you can usually check this by looking underneath your router. And if it's not there, you can just check the box or you can check the website. Okay, then you want to click login. After logging in uh, to do port forwarding, you want to go to the advanced section. The first tab in the advanced section is already port forwarding, so this makes things easier for everyone. Okay, uh, you can only create up to 20 port forwarding rules for this router. So for this demonstration, I want to port forward the port 22 so that I can SSH to my Raspberry Pi from a different network. So I'm going to name this rule Raspi SSH. I guess this is the most appropriate name for this. And um, for the private IP, I've set my Raspberry Pi to have a static IP of 192.168.0.140. Okay. This is actually quite important because if you don't set a static IP address for your device, your router will your router's DHCP server will just give a different IP address every time and that will mess up your port forwarding. So after setting your static IP on your device and entering and entering it here, you wanna enter the public port and the private port. For SSH, the default port is 22. This can be reconfigured of course on your Raspberry Pi itself. But I left it as the default. For traffic type, you want to select TCP. You may be wondering what TCP and UDP is. These are transport data transport protocols. I will not go into that, but uh, just know that TCP is used for SSH in this case. After setting all these things, uh, you want to check the box and click Save Settings. Okay, once the settings are saved, you can just 
log out and you should be good to go. After forwarding your port, you probably want to check whether it's actually open or not. So what you can do is go on a different network and using ZenMap, uh, what you want to do is enter the public IP address of your network or the network on which you've set up port forwarding. You want to enter the public IP address here and you want to select Quick Scan Plus. I've already selected it uh, by default, it's actually intent scan. So I've selected Quick Scan Plus and then what you want to do is click scan. This should list out the list of open ports. Yeah, I'm not going to demonstrate it, but if you want to know how to use it, uh, the web it's explained on their website. There's proper documentation there. The link is provided in the description below. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and you found it informative, and if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to our channel. And do check out our other videos on the channel too. Also, if you have any doubts, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Bye!